injuries were kind of the, the story of last year's camp and last year's team. How healthy are you guys this year, and how much has that paid off in depth going forward? I'll tell you what, you know, it's a big difference between um, this year and last year. Um, the depth is tremendous right now. You know, we got three deep up front. We got three deep at linebacker. You know what I mean? Then we're right there in the secondary. We got to get a couple of guys back. But, you know, that, that shouldn't be an issue this year. How much has Jamie showed you across this camp, and what kind of a player can he be for this team? Um, he's a really talented young man. Um, the, the impressive thing about Jamie right now, he's a he's a smart guy, and as a freshman, he's able to kind of compute the calls with the guys. He's signaling, he's doing all the different things like that, which is uncommon for a freshman to be honest, especially playing safety. Um, probably one of our toughest positions to play is, is as a freshman is safety, and he's doing a really good job of doing that. Um, he's playing nickel fours, he's repping with the black group some, so he's doing a bunch of different things, man. He's going to be a talented young man. He's just got to continue to keep working. What do you say Jam so far this camp and how has he kind of progressed into this? Really good. You know, Jam been in the program a long time and the defense hadn't changed. Um, so he's more confident in making calls. Um, the good thing is he's back there with Jamie Robinson where he has to make some of the calls and he's doing a really good job with that. He's coming in, he's meeting extra. He's doing all the things that he needs to be a, to be a good player and he's healthy. You know, he hadn't been healthy in a long time and, you know, his hamstrings, everything's working and, and, and he's in great shape. So we're excited about him. He had a great offseason. He's paying dividends in fall camp. T. Rob, you guys weren't shy about running a freshman out there to start season opener last year in the secondary with those four talented DBs there. Could one of them, maybe two of them, be in the starting lineup on August 31st? Yeah, possibly. We hadn't made any um, exact positions right now. We don't we don't know that yet, but but I can very well see that happen. And um, those guys are coming out and they're competing every day. They're practicing hard. And, you know, we've been playing freshmen. Me and Coach Muschamp, we've been together now, you know, eight, nine years. And, and we done played a bunch of true freshmen, probably more than anyone else in the country. So we're definitely not scared to play them. If they're talented enough, we tell them all the time, if you're the best player, you'll start. If you're good enough, you'll play. And um, some of those guys are, are right there on the verge of, of earning themselves a starting position. So if they continue to progress as we move forward these next two weeks, you know, maybe those guys will be out there going out there on, on day one. How has Jamel Cook looked? He's doing okay. You know, it, it's it's a learning curve for him, just coming from corner to safety and all those different things like that, just the verbiage of everything that we do. And, you know, but he he, he got to continue to keep working, and he, and he will. Um, he's been really good in the building of trying to. He's just got to continue to to keep improving. Where's R.J. Roderick fit at this moment? So right now, R.J. is playing at safety. He's playing at nickel. And um, him and Jamie battling out and, at all those positions. And the, the key to the drill is, is we're going to find our best five players. And we're gonna put those guys out there when our when our nickel package, our best four when we're in regular package, and if we can get to a dime, our best six, you know. So right now, just trying to find out where guys fit and where guys are comfortable playing. And right now, you know, just trying to figure out if RJ is gonna be the nickel or he's gonna be the safety when we're in nickel. You know, it depends on how Jamie do, and he's doing a good job right now. So, so we'll get a chance to see how this guy feel, how how it all unfold. Coach Muschamp, Coach Muschamp mentioned uh, Israel working some at safety. Was that just a little bit because of the depth thing, or is that something he's been doing more seriously? Um, he's been doing that very seriously. Um, that's one thing that we tell our guys. They want to go to the next level. They got to be um, dual dual players. They have to be able to play multiple positions. And um, Israel is playing corner. He's playing safety. JC is playing nickel. He's playing corner. Jamie's playing safety. He's playing nickel. RJ is playing safety. He's playing nickel. You know, Jam is playing some nickel as well. So, you know, our guys are doing that. We've done that since we've been here, and um, that's something that we'll continue to do. But Izzy is – working some at nickel and working some at safety. So we're excited about him. He's a smart guy. So so it's not much for him to learn. He's sitting in the meetings. He just don't listen to the corner stuff. He listens to everything. And he's doing a great job. And he's going to be a really good player for us. Do you know the turnover numbers so far? This, at this point in camp, are you pleased with the turnover numbers? Um, probably not as pleased as we want to be. You know, you look at the scrimmages, I think, in the – two big scrimmages we had. I think we only had one or two turnovers. So that's not what we want. Really good on the offensive part, you know, because that's one of the things that we talk about is the ball. Um, so Jake's been doing a good job protecting that, you know, but we got to do a better job of causing and forcing some turnovers to, 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 to do what we need to do. Is there a set number you like? I think three is the number that's... that's yeah, we go, for, we go for three a day. You know, and that's kind of our goal, and that's only in team drill. So we don't count one-on-ones. We don't count cocky. We don't count any of that stuff. We count one-on-ones, 11 versus 11 people. And when we're doing those things, that's when we count our turnovers. So we want to get three in those drills. DJ goes down in the first game last year. How much did you guys have to adjust before that next game? Was it a case like that's 25% of the playbook that now you might not be able to do? I mean, he's a talented dude, and um, he's a big focal point in our defense. And so I don't want to talk about that. If it's some wood around here, I'll knock on it. <laughs> um, but we need DJ to be successful. He's doing a great job, man. He had a great camp. Those guys are playing really well up front, and I'm excited about them.
How much did Javon being healthy and staying in the middle of that line last year help what you guys were trying to do um, with all the injuries? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Javon's a staple in the defense. Um, he's doing a great job. He's practicing hard. You can see his body, man. He's done changed so much just this offseason. He had a really good offseason, and it's going to pay major dividends for us this fall. But he's a motivated guy. He's an excited guy. And, um, he's playing really well, um, and, and he needs to stay healthy and keep doing what he's doing, and we got a chance to be really good. Is Ernest Jones your starting mic if you had to play this Saturday? Um, yeah, right now Ernest is doing a great job. Um, like I said, nothing is finalized, so I wouldn't go in and say that, but he's been repping with the ones a bunch. Um, he's making a bunch of the calls. Uh, you know, the communication has been so good when he's in the game, so we're excited about Ernest. And, you know, he, he, he comes out with the right attitude. He's one of those guys that make practice fun. And um, it's, it's, it's becoming contagious to our guys. Practice is fun. And um, that's what it's all about to have a good football team. What does that do for your defense when you have Ernest and TJ both on the field? I mean, it, the communication has been great. And, you know, TJ has been a staple in our defense for a long time. He runs and he hits. And um, if he continue to do that, which he definitely will, we'll, we'll, we'll be very successful. But those guys are battling, man. You look at Damani, he's playing really well as well. You know, you look at all those guys, Rosendo, you know, them guys, them guys playing well. So I'm really excited about where we are at linebackers. I feel like we're probably two to three deep there that we can run to those guys in the game. And, you know, in the years past, if they were going in the game, Coach Hustler had to tell me, that. And um, I had to be small on what I was calling and have a little small call list for those guys that they was able to rep. But right now I feel confident that they can rep anything that we're doing in our defense and they've been doing a great job of handling everything. So excited about those guys. Do you all have Sherrod back yet? Yeah, Sherrod's back rolling and um, we're excited about him. So we just got to figure out where he fit in the mix as far as Sam, Will, Mike, where we are. And, and like I said, man, we're trying to put our best people on the field. So regardless of what position they did play, you know, we're looking for the best 11 to play in regular uh, and the best 11 to play in nickel. And, and and that's just what we're looking for. And um, we'll figure that out. We got two weeks to do it. We're still in camp. And um, we got a lot of stuff that we still need to iron out. What's different about him this year as opposed to last year, Rod? Yeah, I mean, he had a good off season, and you know he's coming in. He just got he's gonna play some different positions for us. We asking him to do a little more than we have been asking him to do. You know, he got to learn some Sam, he got to learn some Mike and some Will, and he's more than capable of doing it. So, so he was out there today, and he was rolling pretty good. So we just got to get him going. Where Rosendo and uh, Damani in weak or middle? Yeah, so Rosendo's playing Mike and Sam, and um, Damani's playing Will and Dime. You know, so those guys are coming in, and I tell you what, man, they have really improved, and um, we're excited about them. And like I said, man, the depth is so good at the linebacker position and on the D-line. I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty solid in the front seven. How's Kier? You know, Kier is good. He's coming around now off the injury, and um, he's doing a good job of coming through and understanding what we're doing. So so he's done played a lot of football, so we'll, we'll be good there. That was my next question. I mean, he's a guy that you can trust despite yeah. missing some kids. Yeah. He'd be go back in there. Yeah, he's yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's doing all the walkthroughs. He's doing everything right now, so he's back rolling. And um, so we're excited about him, and we got to continue to, to get him healthy and get him ready to rock. What does having a pair of corners like JC and Izzy allow you to do as a defense? Um, we'll be more man-to-man. Obviously, um, those guys are long. They're able to play a lot of bump and run. Um, they're talented. They're very confident in their abilities. And, you know, I, I was fortunate enough at a couple other schools to play with some good corners. And um, it's a different deal when you can play with corners like these guys. These guys are locked down, shut down corners. And, you know, we're going to challenge them to go out there and play by themselves. And they're able to do that. We'll be really good. If they're not, then we won't. And um, they know that and they understand that. But those guys work like that. You know, if you just look at how they handle their business in the classroom, how they handle their business off the field and as well on the field. I mean, those guys handle their business the right way, and, and they're growing up in, in front of our eyes. So I'm excited about those guys. And, um, the good thing about those guys, man, they're bringing up the young guys as well. You know, you look at John Dixon, you look at Shiloh, you look at um, Cam Smith, you look at all those guys, they're gravitating to those guys of their work ethic. You know, they work the right way, and um, we're excited about them. And if they continue to do that, which they will, we'll, we'll, we'll be really successful in the secondary. Percentage-wise, how much man-to-man -man were you able to call last year compared to what you? Uh, probably about 35 percent. We play man-to-man. -man. Probably want to get that somewhere in 50 to 60 percent um, range of being able to play man-to-man. -man. And if we're really good at it, then we'll do it 80, 90 percent. If we're solid at it, we'll do it 50 percent. So it just depends on how we're playing and um, the team that we're playing against and what they're trying to do. You know, you gotta be careful with a bunch of man-to-man -man with the teams that's running the ball because you got a lot of backs turned and they're running the ball. It ain't a good idea. Um, so we just got to do a good job of just changing it up a little bit and doing some zone pressures and different things like that, you know, to kind of combat what the offense is doing. Have you guys started specifically scheming for North Carolina? No, not at all, not at all. Um, right now we're still in camp. We'll have our last day of camp tomorrow. Then our players will be off. Um, so we, we, we're, we're focusing on South Carolina right now, and, and that's been the focus. And I know it sounds like coach talk, um, but it's really the truth. 
Um, right now, we're worried about what we need to get better at, and um, we're preparing for our season. We're not just preparing for one team right now. But as we move forward on Thursday, we'll introduce North Carolina, and then we'll put our focus on those guys. Do you pay a lot of attention to what's going on? Like, they just aimed a true freshman QB the other day. I mean, is that just something you put down as a note and talk, talk about it later? Yeah, our players don't worry about North Carolina, <laughs> but I do. And, um, yeah, we, we, we look at that stuff, and, and I understand that they're, they're starting the freshman and all that kind of stuff, and we got to have a good package for him. And, thing with that you don't have film on him so you got to go back and watch some of his high school tape which is funny when we were at Florida we had to do that with Johnny Menzel you know what I mean just going back watching some stuff just seeing the stuff that he do but we recruited him and and we know who he is and we know what he's capable of doing so he's a good player and obviously he earned the start starting spot so you know they seen something in the camp that they like um, but we got to go out and take care of us and, and we'll be fine from there. That first half against Johnny didn't go too well did it? Then, but the second half was great. <laughs> How often is AJ Turner with you, and where do you see him in the rotation? Yeah, right so AJ AJ is, is with us. He's been repping with us a bunch. Um, he's repping with the black group some, and, and he's doing some different things too. So you know, AJ's playing a little bit of nickel, a little bit of corner. He's been doing a good job with it. Um, he's just got to continue to work on his techniques and different things like that because he hadn't played a bunch of snaps at corner. Um, but you know, it's a position that it, it takes reps, and um, he's going to get the reps that he need before the game, and, and he'll be a good player for us. What if Cam Black group, you mean the starters? Is yes. that okay? Yes. What, what if Cam, uh, Shiloh, and Johnny been able to kind of show you this camp? Yeah, I mean, th those guys are learning. I mean, it's hard to come in here and play as a freshman. Um, and I know every high school kid come and want to play as a freshman. That, that don't happen all the time. You know what I mean? But those guys are showing some kind of maturity of coming in, doing extra stuff. We don't do a lot of film work with those guys. We do a lot of walkthroughs. Um, when the older guys are watching watching film and watching practice, I take those guys in the indoor and, and we walk through practice and, mess, and walk through their mistakes because they need to see that. They need to duplicate those things again to make sure they're doing the right thing. But, you know, those guys are talented young men. Um, they're going to help us here in the future. Um, hopefully it's in the near future. Um, they continue to work like they're working, but we're excited about those guys. Um, none of those guys was a bus, you know, and that's the one thing when you recruit guys, you're always weary of, you know, when you get here, can that guy play? You know what I mean? Because maybe he was a good player in high school and it just don't translate to college. Um, but he's he, that, those guys are doing a really good job of coming in, understanding what we're doing. But they have good leadership. You look at JC, you look at Israel, you look at guys that they can see every single day and see how they work and how they perform and how they approach the day from weight room standpoint to football to whatever it is. If they doing things right, then those guys gravitate to those guys. And, you know, and, and that's how we build a, a winning culture around here. Is that Sam linebacker position a little bit more important this year since y'all have some power physical run games on, on the schedule? Yeah, yeah, you, you know, it's going to be six, seven teams that's going to get into 12 personnel and 21 personnel, and we have to be able to stop the two back runs. And, um, you know, we got some really good competition with Sherrod Green and Jamal Brown out there, and also with Rosendo, and we also can swing Danny Fennell at the Sam as well. So we have bodies, and that's the one thing. So different games are going to require different um, rotations and different personnel, but, you know, those guys are doing well with everything. Thing and those guys are cross training as well, so so I feel really good about it. But yeah, to answer your question, we we'll definitely have to have a, a good regular package and some things that we can go stop two back runs and twelve personnel run game. Where does Eldridge fit into that same conversation? Yeah, same thing. He's he's battling with those guys too, and he's also battling at that and, and wheel backer. So he's doing some of the things like that. But it's a it, it, the thing about it right now, and this is one thing we hadn't had since we've been here, is competition at all spots. You know, no one's safe. I mean, you come out, and you have a bad day of practice, you replace the next day. And what that does is it, it, it creates the, the attitude and the culture that we want. You know, if guys, you know, don't want to come out, want to practice, you know, if they miss a day of practice, man, they're screwed. You know what I mean? Somebody's going to jump in front of them. And um, that, that, that's what we want to build around here. So I'm excited about it. Has Daniel Pennell been more at the buck or at Sam? Both, or? both. So, so he's been doing a bunch of buck. Um, but he has reps from Sam. Um, we do it more in walkthroughs. I mean, he done played that in games before. He's fine with all the stuff that we ask him to do. We won't have an elaborate package, package with him when he's at Sam. It'll be him edge setting, sitting on the line of scrimmage, setting edges on big bodies when we play teams like Georgia, um, Alabama teams that's running the football that we need to stop, Texas and them. You know, we got to be able to stop those with big people. Is there an added benefit to coaching against the Philongo offense first time out, I guess? knowing what he's going to kind of bring to the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, he's been some other places, and you never know if that was more, you know what I mean, what they were doing at Ole Miss. Yeah, so so we have to do a good job of going back and watching him and seeing where everybody has been and understanding they got some two-back principles that we need to be able to stop, some of the option stuff that we need to be able to stop. So, you know, we got a good plan for him, but obviously it helps seeing him before and seeing the things that they hurt us on at Ole Miss that we have to prepare for. But, you know, first ball games, you never know. We got to come out. We got to, you know, fall back on our rules.
rules and our discipline on, on things that we need to get better. How unique is it to coach or try to game plan against a staff that you've never really seen together before that Mac Brown is just kind of compiled? No, no. We have base calls that we can run against anything. Right. And um, our kids feel about, feel really good about that, and we can call something, and those guys know how to line up. And the good thing about our offense, their tempo, so their tempo, so we'll be able to, you know what I'm saying, I'm not worried about that as much. You know, it's about guys getting lined up and all those things like that. And um, our guys are, you know, our offense are very multiple as well. So our guys are forced to do that in practice. And um, if you do that in practice, it, it'll be a lot easier in the game when you get a chance to not be so tired, get a chance to sit down, all right, get some air conditioning, watch it on the jumbotron, then come back out as opposed to special teams, going to offense, defense, da da da. The practice is a little harder than it is the game. How does Tate feast or look from your perspective? Really good, really good. He's a, he got a big lower body. Um, he's really fast. I mean, he got really good ball skills coming out of the backfield. Um, he got to continue to work himself in shape. Obviously, not in football shape yet, um, but he'll eventually get there. But he's doing a good job. And the thing that I've been more impressed with him by, he's able to gel with the guys. You know what I mean? You can see our family atmosphere kicking in when he comes in. And I see him with different guys every day. You know what I mean? It ain't just a click of dudes. He ain't just hanging with the running backs, hanging with some of the defensive guys. He's hanging out with everybody. So they all have embraced him. And um, he's doing a great job, man. He's working on special teams. He done been up to Coach Hustle's office several times. Coach, I want to do this. I want to do that. So he's excited about being here, and we're excited about having him. How close is that position battle with Aaron Sterling and uh, J.J.? Yeah, you know, on D-line, it, it really don't matter. They matter who starts. I don't care who starts, to be quite honest with you. Um, those guys going to rotate a bunch. Um, we have to stay fresh on the defensive line to be a really good football team. Um, but Aaron Sterling has been playing really good, had a really good camp, and J.J. is starting to come along now. So we just got to continue to work those guys. But, you know, like I said, man, I, I don't care who starts. I tell our players that all the time. They're the only people that care who starts, them and their parents. You know what I mean? I just want the, the, the best guys on the field. And if you're good enough, again, you're going to play. You know what I mean? So on D-line, obviously, we got to rotate and keep those guys fresh. So all those guys will get a multiple uh, amount of reps. When, when you're working in those defensive linemen, do you do you go in and say, all right, these guys are going to get a series, these guys are going to get a series, or is it more feel? Yeah. How, how do you kind of um, – When we're playing a tempo team, mm -hmm. um, we have it already organized going into the game. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the four that will be in the first series, then the second series. And especially when you're playing young players, you want to keep an older player with a younger player so he can communicate with him a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we have that kind of already done. Um, but then when you get into the second half, you get to the course of the game, who's playing the best? Um, it's the big boys, you know, are they in shape? Are they ready to rock? Mm -hmm. Do we need to keep them for the fourth quarter? Those things like that come up, and that's more headphone talk. But, you know, probably the first six, seven series of the game, you know, we probably, we, we kind of know who's going. How have you seen Zach Pickens progress over the course of from the spring till now? What's different about him? Uh, more confident, um, and that's the more that's, that's the most important thing. I mean, it's hard to play defensive line as, as a freshman. I mean, those guys big. You know, he's always been bigger than everybody, so technique wasn't and very important. And um, but now he's realizing that he just can't overpower people. You know, he got to play with leverage, he got to play with technique, he got to work on that stuff. Um, and then you know how it is. It's it's just the different things of him understanding. You know, the, what what's demanded of him. You know, effort, getting to the ball, you know, pad level, stuff like that. And he's doing a great job, man. He, he, he's going to be a really good player for us. Um, he's definitely turning the corner. And um, it, it helps when he got Kobe next to him and he got Javon. He played a lot better than when he got, you know, Tyreek and all them young guys next to him. And both of them looking at each other and don't know what to tell each other. <laughs> um, so we just got to continue to work. Um, our guys are, 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 are got the right mindset right now. And um, we feel really, really good on where they are. Is he on pace to play open again? Oh, yeah, he, he, I would imagine he'll, he'll have a good opportunity to play. <laughs> has, has Jamar Brown surprised you at all with what he's been able to do this, this camp? Surprised me, no. Um, we recruited Jamar, and what he was doing at St. Thomas Aquinas, he's doing now. Um, he's fast, um, he's communicating, and he's playing with a lot of poise. You know, and, and and to be a freshman, that's what it takes. I mean, he's a very mature dude. You know, if you you meet Jamar, he don't talk a bunch. Um, he's a very quiet fellow, but he's been doing really good, and he's going. He earned the trust of his teammates. You know, but like I said, man, in each room, if you just look at it, we have really good leadership. When we look at T.J. Brunson, who's been a staple in our defense, um, he's in there with Jamar every day. He see how, how, how T.J. approached the game, and he does what T.J. does. And they're kind of the same type of people. Both of them don't talk a bunch. Um, but, you know, he got great leadership in his room, man, and that's what it's about. And that's, that's building the, the winning culture that we've been talking about. I think the football's outside there. What prompted you guys to bolt the footballs? Turnovers. <laughs> and so every time you go by there, you snatch that ball out. You know what I mean? So we want our guys constantly thinking about the football. Um, that, that, that's what we, we, we hang our hat on. We look at our plan to win. The ball is the most important thing in this building. 
and um, Coach Muschamp mentioned it every single day. Every everyone in every meeting mentioned every single day. It's about the ball. It's protecting it on offense. It's going to get it on defense. Healthy enough to be in the mix for the first week. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Um, he's been doing really good with all his rehab stuff. Um, he's starting to move around really good. So you know, I mean, hopefully we can get him out there um, as soon as possible and get him back rolling. But I believe he will be. Um, from everything I'm hearing from the training staff, that, that that he'll be he'll be right there on time to be able to do this. You mentioned communication a bunch of times today, and I guess. With the way that last year ended when you had a lot of guys kind of thrown in, was that a good reminder for some of these players of how important that kind of thing is with, you know, what, what was communication kind of an issue at the end of the last year and did, can that be? Um, yeah. I think it's more uh, good communication. I think it's more of, you know, guys knowing that they got to play multiple positions. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at, you know, Israel was forced to play safety last mm -hmm. year. Now he's playing it in practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You look at JC, he was forced to go out and play nickel and play corner. Mm -hmm. Now he's doing that in practice. You look at all those guys, we're, we're dude training everybody. Mm -hmm. So like we tell them, man, prepare for everything. You know what I mean? So that's what training camp is about. It's not about learning one position. You know, for the freshmen, yeah, we want them at one position for the most part. But for those older guys that's able to, 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 to understand what we're trying to do, we want those guys to play multiple positions. So if we got to do that, you know, during the course of a season, they'll be in there and they'll be just fine. The defense tackle spot beside Javon, are y'all sort of settled on who would probably got there first there or who else? Uh, so it would be Javon, Kobe, Kier. Um, those guys are batted out each week on the, on the two. And then we got Zach, we got Rick, um, we got Jabari playing some inside as well. You know what I mean? So we're, we're pretty we're, we're pretty deep inside. So I feel good about those guys competing. And that's the best thing, man. When you got guys competing to see who start every single day in practice, you get the best in practice. Prompted you uh, growing the beard? Huh? Prompted the beard. Ha! Ah, there was something that I decided to do uh, just for camp. I can't wait to cut it off. It's itching the hell out of me. Yeah, so 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 it, it, it won't be there. No, no, it won't be. It won't be there. No, no, no. It's it's when school starts shaved. When camp is over, it's shaved. So Thursday, Thursday morning. It'll be done. Yeah. Done. Done. Have you ever had it that long? Never in my life. Never had a beard in my life.